I'm Scott Prop and Roll, and welcome to Prop Masters Reacting to Christmas Movies. I got Mark, Poppy, and Matt in the back. On this episode, we're going to talk about props in Christmas movies. Ho, ho, ho. I love Christmas movies, but they can be a little proppy. And what better movie to start with than A Christmas Story? It's a good example. We've been in a situation before where we have like three gifts, three matching gifts, but they're gonna do 10 or 12 takes of opening the presents. Opening presents is the one thing you can pretty much guarantee you're gonna see in a Christmas movie, Christmas episode of a show. And it's always a hassle because you have to rewrap or you have these multiples. Say you have 10 multiples of a gift. Now that's easy if the gift is socks or you know, whatever. A baseball bat. A baseball bat. But if it's a period prop, a prop that we had to source, we could only get one or two of them, somebody is behind the scenes at a wrapping station, wrapping presents constantly, constantly. What's really tough is when, and we've been in a situation before where we had to have vintage wrapping paper, very specific wrapping paper, and you don't have a ton of it. Then you just have to just tell the director, okay, well, you've got eight takes worth. Right. There are several cool gags in A Christmas Story. This fantasy sequence where it looks like he's got a dip in his mouth. Oh yeah. And now I read that uh, according to Peter Billingsley, he actually did have a real tobacco. The prop master gave him a real dip it made him sick and they had to like halt filming for uh, for about an hour till he felt better okay uh, it's true it's true true story why the hell would you do that that makes no sense <laughs> at it, all it doesn't the director was not happy their crew members went to craft service got some raisins put raisins in his mouth and that's most of what you're seeing uh, in his mouth are raisins but at first when they first started filming they had real gave him real tobacco we uh, have done dip in several mm -hmm. things, and I know on The Sun we did, there was that coffee. It was called Cowboy Coffee Chew. It was just chopped up coffee grounds. It was, it was coffee ground. beans, I think. It was like this really sweet but like bitter coffee flavor. But when you spit, it was almost like too much. Yeah, what I found works best is the shredded beef jerky, and I believe they still make it. Mm -hmm. We'd use just a soft beef jerky, and then you still get that brown spit, but it's not like the coffee chew where it's like you're spitting Hershey's chocolate syrup. Right. Another cool gag in A Christmas Story is when Ralphie is being punished with Life Boy soap. Mm. Yes. Now, I actually molded a bar of this. I did a video about it last year. Um, but in, for the movie, what they did was they just did a wax bar of soap. That right. way it didn't disintegrate in his mouth um, and he could, they could film all day yeah, with that. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, it, but but yeah. if you look close, it doesn't, it looks, something looks off. It doesn't have like the Life Boy logo on it. It's not really, doesn't have the curve that the real Life Boy soap mm -hmm. had. Have you ever had your mouth washed out That's with soap? I, I have. I have. Do you think that that made you less prone to using profanity? No. <laughs> There's a right yeah. place and time for everything. All of uh, Gene Shepard's narration is spot on because you didn't want Life Boy. Life Boy was a pretty harsh punishment. Yeah. Because mm -hmm. um, he didn't say fudge. Fudge. Too bad they didn't make it with fudge. Okay, another one of my favorite scenes is Flick with his tongue on the flagpole. A triple dog dare you. Flick sticks his tongue on the pole. And how they did it was they drilled the hole and put like a vacuum hose, like uh, uh, kind of like the dental uh, oh, suction right. device. Mm -hmm. So they had a hole, had a suction device leading out, and then when he stuck his, his tongue on it, it stuck his tongue to the pole without hurting him. Yeah. And that that's... way he was able to, you'll see, look, he pulls his head away and you kind of, it looks like it's sticking there. And, yeah. you know, you can't yeah. use glue, you, there's, you can't tape it. <laughs> it's a great um, effect. So that was, I think that was ingenious. So if it was the effects guy or the prop guy, whoever did it, an amazing did, gag. Do you think they did the same technique on uh, Dumb and Dumber? That I'm was a fake remember. tongue. I think Wasn't it was it? a fake Because it like stretches. I think it's a fake tongue. Yeah. yeah. There are a lot of cool gags in Elf, but when he's running around New York City and he goes to the New York subway entrance, he pulls gum off of the railing. Oh, look, right yeah. there. Yeah. Now, what they did was they put <laughs> packing tape, just clear packing tape, 
and he pre-chewed the gum and stuck them on there himself. So it's still gross, but he was, you know, at least it was his own spit. Yeah, and that's an example of just like simple. Just yeah. keep it simple. Yeah, and it worked. We couldn't tell yeah. there was tape there. And the doctor's office scene where Buddy's eating cotton balls. Of course, he's not eating real cotton balls. He's eating white cotton candy, like here. What's one? Uh, oh, right, I missed that. That's good. I'm gonna give him a couple. How old is this? Give him a couple. Yeah, I, I got it in 2003 when the movie came oh. out. So that was a good year, <laughs> good vintage. Then, oh, then there's a scene where he like jumps on the tree. It's the old school switcheroo. Buddy says he's gonna put the star on the tree, so he runs off camera, switches out with a stunt double dressed as Buddy, who performs the stunt. Reminds me of that video of Kiefer Sutherland. Oh yeah, Kiefer, he loves Christmas trees. Yeah, he's kind of like a pirate. Hey Kiefer, you a pirate, man. That would explain everything. Kiefer, however, does his own stunts. So the whole toy testing with the Jack in the Box, mm -hmm. Uh, the props and special effects got together and they made it remote control. So they were able, able, they were able to hand John Favreau a remote control and uh, Buddy, Will Ferrell had no idea when it was gonna go off. So when you see his surprised reaction, and I, and you know, rumor has it, Will Ferrell got a little, uh, you know, annoyed. All right, so the employee, his manager's name tag says Wanda on it. Now, the story behind oh, yeah. that is Wanda Sykes was supposed to play that part, and right before filming, she had to back out, and they hired this guy. As a joke, they decided to just give him Wanda's name tag. And he showed up in Couples Retreat, too. That was, oh, he was good in Couples yeah. Retreat. You know who directed Couples Retreat? Uh, Peter Billingsley. Boom. Really? Yep. yep. I just watched that for the first yeah, time. Yeah, they're all buddies. John Favreau, Peter Billingsley. Yep. It's all it's interconnected. Fun. Way back. In this scene, that's actually director John Favreau doing the voice of the narwhal. Bye, buddy. Hope you find your dad. Hope you find your dad. Thank you, Mr. Narwhal. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. Thanks, Mr. Narwhal. Saying Home Alone is prop heavy is an understatement because it's full of prop gags and prop tricks and practical effects. It's, I believe it's pretty much, I don't know if they used any VFX in this, but they did yeah, a this... ton of practical effects, like the reverse shot where the van almost hits Macaulay Culkin. Right. So they just reversed it, just like uh, uh, Raising Arizona, where the convicts oh, the baby. almost hit the baby. Mm -hmm. And it's the same exact concept. They just reverse it, which still makes me nervous. I'm always worried that you can hit the, you know, accidentally put it and drive you know I'm, I'm always paranoid about stuff like that um there's the shopping bag scene yep where on cue the groceries fall out of the shopping bag yeah and that's a simple gag really but it works well um but with the shopping bags it was uh by all reports they just had a little line where you pull it and I've tried it before. I used uh, fishing line, monofilament, mm -hmm. uh, to where you, you have all the groceries kind of wrapped like a net with some fishing line so held together. Mm -hmm. And then you, on cue, when they say, okay, release the groceries, you just barely have to move your finger and the bags will it open and, and you know, dump out. Yet you still have the bags in your hand. Yeah, right. So the fishing line just kind of runs through a net basically yeah, so it's actor controlled right and then maybe they used a little uh glue stick at the bottom to hold the slit together oh yeah yeah, yeah. you know so mm -hmm. the weight so but the weight the, of it but the weight of it will open it up. open it up and it all falls yeah out. yeah yeah but it's, it's a great guy yeah. yeah there's a little prop mistake in the grocery store scene he's buying a big bottle of tide clothes detergent and when you see the groceries come out of the bag you don't see that no bottle tide. of tide but the very next shot after he drops the groceries is him pouring the Tide into the washing machine, which is like one of the main reasons he went to the grocery store to begin with. Yeah, you know, this made me think about something. You know, back in the day, especially like pre-80s, you know, there were a lot of continuity mistakes and there were a lot of times where they just didn't care, I think, because I think they were like, people see these things once, maybe. They go to the theater, it plays on the late show, this home video wasn't a big thing. But it took a while for the film industry to catch up with the fact that 
oh wow, people can pause and rewind. Exactly. Sure. And that's around the time people started catching on, but it did take Hollywood a little bit longer yeah. to, you know, um, Hollywood is a machine and it's, it takes a while for things to change. And then this, uh, where the chair goes up against Kieran Culkin's <laughs> face, mm -hmm. uh, if you look, it's a rubber chair. Yeah, yeah, you can see it. You can see it bend a little bit. Yeah. That's a good, that's a neat, it's like they molded, because yeah. you see the grain lines in yep. the back of that chair. Mm. Daniel Stern, when he's sneaking through the window, He's stepping on ornaments, and those are actually breakaway ornaments that he stepped on. Yeah, uh -huh. he, he he tells people it's sugar glass, but it's actually you know breakaway resin. Joe Pesci, Daniel Stern breaking into the house. Those look like real Hot Wheels. Yeah, uh, beginning of the booby traps. Yeah, that yeah. was obviously stunt stunt folks, and that's a rubber Oof. rubber paint can. You can almost tell where he releases it. Yeah, you can feel like you can see it, right? Yeah, let's rewind to the first paint can. Well, yeah, and I mean, right if it's here. a full or almost full paint can, you know, you're just getting into physics and stuff, but obviously it would swing a little bit different. But look, look at the, the bottom. bottom. Yeah, oh, you can yeah, yeah, tell because yeah. it's not as shiny. The rubber paint can makes me think of something commenting on the bottom because I don't think we've talked about how closely we work with the paint department. Mm -hmm. when we have rubbers or things that need to be aged. Sometimes called scenic department, but yes. yeah, they do the paint. Yeah, we call them paint department. And yeah. uh, if we're fortunate, we'll have an onset scenic painter there to help touch things up. If not, and there are shows where we don't, and that's where we have to kind of have a touch-up kit. We, uh, you know, we'll ask the painters, hey, leave us some touch-up paint. Invariably, you'll have an item that, you know, that chips or just with the actor holding it, the paint starts to wear off and you're constantly touching things up the whole show. So Daniel Stern's gonna turn the light on. Another one of the many rubber props. I love the time it takes. God, and the sound uh, adds so much to it as well. So you're to guess that it was plugged in. Well, I don't know how it was hot. It, you know, it wasn't plugged it, in. It, it wasn't, yeah, because the cords attached to the string. The, uh, yeah. But it we'll still makes leave for, a mark. Makes for, yeah. <laughs> That'll leave a mark. Okay, segueing from Home Alone to Violent Night, which came out last year which I, I loved it. It's like they took Die Hard, Lethal Weapon, and Home Alone, and A Christmas Story, put it in a blender, and let it go. Because it's, it's just this weird mixture of a bunch of different Christmas movies uh -huh. and action films mixed and, in. And David Harbour is so good as Santa Claus. He used to be a Viking or something? He's, yeah, he's like a Viking in like, before he became Santa Claus, he was like this warrior Viking. Mm -hmm. So this is the Home Alone clip, they call it. Oh, God. How did they do that? Was that visual effects, the nail in the mouth? Because it stays stationary. Like it has to be, because you see it come up. It was visual effects, it had to be. Now, I haven't seen really this good. movie, but do these characters know about Home Alone? Well, the, the girl does. Is, there ever, yeah. is that ever discussed? Yeah, yeah, oh. it is. The little girl oh. who sets these traps, that little girl, she talks about having seen Home Alone. Ah. So definitely inspired by. Oh. And pulls it out. Ow. Oh. Uh, okay. And she dodges Oop. him, but then the, the here he comes. Oh, oh good. Oh. oh. <laughs> That's oh. a lot of oh. bowling balls. Yep. Oh, oh, okay. <sighs> Okay. Oh. Back. Sorry, that was whole obvious, uh, him holding it up. Oh, God. <laughs> yes, very obvious. Uh, I wonder what they used there. I guess it's supposed to be some industrial glue. Steps over. Now, my guess is they used breakaway glass ornaments. Rubber dumbbell. Oh. <laughs> Santa Claus is coming. Town. There he is. I know you have a lot of questions about this scene, but I talked to Kurt Brune, the prop master of Violent Night, and here's what he had to say. <laughs> I'm gonna walk us through our attic sequence, which is a bit of a nod to another great Christmas movie, Home Alone. Originally it was scripted that the step was just greased up and he fell backwards onto the spiked mat. 
But I suggested the scored rung would sell the fall better than slipping on some grease. Our writers then added the nail in the rung, which turned out to be a gruesome and painful way to trap our bad guy in place for a few moments. The audience reaction in theaters was pretty fun to watch when he landed on that nail. I did build a rig of armature wire for his lower jaw so he could fit around from a side view. It made it look like there was actually a nail protruding through his jaw and into his mouth. But most of his shots were straight on, so they weren't able to use the rig and VFX out of the nail in post. Next, we see Trudy move the exercise trampoline into place under the line of bowling balls, which are being held in place by a hockey stick up on a pair of overturned skis, keeping with our winter theme. I needed to figure out how to get the bowling balls launched at a velocity that seemed realistic enough to injure our mercenaries as they came up to get Trudy. I came up with the idea to lean that exercise trampoline at a 45 degree angle, so when the bowling balls dropped only about 5 feet, they really sped up and flew at Candy Cane at a more threatening speed. We had hard resin balls which looked best on camera, and although much lighter than a real bowling ball, they still hit the trampoline and floor pretty hard, so they looked most realistic, but were still unsafe to launch around cast and crew. Then we had our light density foam bowling balls, which we had both weighted and non-weighted versions of. These, of course, were the safest to launch at the cast, and the non-weighted ones were safe enough to throw right at the heads and faces of our actors. The direct hit headshots Andre takes at the base of the ladders were actually me up in the attic throwing right at his forehead. Those are always pretty funny days on set when you get to do something ridiculous like repeatedly launching bowling balls into someone's face. Andre was great about the whole thing and was very happy I hit my mark each time to minimize the amount of times he, has to, he, had, to, he had to go falling backwards. Uh, as Scott Reader would say, I really nailed it, even though I was dropping the ball. Sorry, Scott. <laughs> so the first bowling ball hits him in the head, knocks him down on his ass, and lands right onto that spiked mat. I assembled seven versions of that mat for that day. One was a hero mat with all real metal pieces sticking up, not safe for humans. Uh, that was only for the low angle shot looking up at our characters. The other six mats were all soft rubber bits with metallic finish, and the crew at IRL Creative made them look so good, you could really only tell them apart from the real spikes by touching them. This was a slimy substance provided by our special effects department. The breakaway bulbs were from Alfonso's Breakaway Glass in Sun Valley, California, and we hand-painted them with colored stained glass paint as well as metallic paints for the socket ends. You know, the thing about Christmas movies that I love is that there's always lots of scenes with, like, really tasty-looking food, so I get hungry when I watch it. Well, that reminds me of a clip from Trading Places. Now, it's not necessarily a Christmas movie, but it has a Christmas segment in it. Uh -huh. And here's Dan Aykroyd oh my pulling a tasty treat. Tasty Salmon. Treat. Oh, my God. Oh, that's so gross. <laughs> he's, eating, he's eating the beard at the same time. Oh, man. Now, I looked this up, and Dan Aykroyd says he was eating real salmon. <laughs> that that's so good. Oh, you know how bad that would have to, that would stink? Oh, God. Oh, you know that smells, that, that poor beard. Well, just think <laughs> about how, that, I mean, do you think they're changing him? And, oh, dude, he's got a gun in his waistband, too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> Oh well, my God, I've the, I love that movie. Yeah, it just so shows, shows the desperation and rock bottom Santa. And no. yeah, <laughs> smuggling salmon in your Santa suit. On the oh, bus. That, that's... See that five times fast. Yeah, I like that. Smuggling salmon in my Santa suit. All right, let's talk about the Santa Claus. Is it the Santa Claus? Or it's is the, the Santa Claus. The Santa Claus. I've never seen this movie. It's good. Look, look. So when Santa, the original Santa, falls, oh yeah, mm -hmm. the blanket. We use snow blankets in the film business, and sometimes they don't work properly, or somebody will get their foot stuck on them, or you'll see them move, yeah. and you really see it move. And this is, it was left in the movie. I don't care what you say, Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Now I have a machine gun. Ho, ho, ho. All right, so in Die Hard, He's running around. Now, uh, Bruce Willis had rubber feet. However, there are scenes where it's kind of tight on his feet mm -hmm. and uh, they'll use rubber glass just like this. Ugh. Yeah. Because you can run around on it barefoot. It won't hurt you at all. It's just like a brittle silicone rubber. I'm always sharding myself. That's it. Thanks for watching Prop Masters react to Christmas movies. I guess that's a wrap. Speaking of that, did you get us any presents? No, but if you think about Christmas gifts long enough, you'll have presence of mind. I, I think I slayed the joke. Ha, ha, ha. ha. yippee ki m <laughs> <laughs> Only I didn't say fudge.